624. Would the clerk please call the roll? Lloyd? Here. Ellison? Here. Newmaster? Here. Thompson? Here. Arcand? Here. If I could ask everyone to please stand, remove your hats for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Tonight we have an agenda before us. Could I please get a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. Motion by Ms. Beloyd. Could I get a second? Second. Second by Dr. Newmaster. Any discussion? Yeah. This will be a voice vote. All in favor of approving the agenda, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Same sign. Yeah. Agenda is approved. <laughs> they agree to. <laughs> We also have before us a consent agenda, which is a number of various items related to school district business, including the, the gifts that our community has so generously given to our students, staff, and the district. So I'd like to extend a thank you. As always, the community has been very generous. Could I get a motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved. Movement by Dr. Arcand and a second? Second. Second by Ms. Beloyd. Any discussion? All in favor of approving the consent agenda, please respond by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Consent agenda is approved. I would like to ask Dr. Kazmercheck to speak about uh, action on policy 206, addenda A and B. Dr. Kazmercheck. All right, thank you, Ms. Ellison, members of the board. So over the last five months or so, a greatly increased interest in speaking during the time set aside for public forum, along with a desire on the part of multiple community groups to congregate on district grounds before, during, and after meetings, has led the policy committee to examine our current district policies and practices. The addition of Addendum A and the revision of Addendum B are being recommended in order to ensure board meetings are able to continue in a manner that is safe, appropriate, consistent and productive. Okay, Dr. Kazmichek, if I could ask you to speak up a little bit, please. Sure. All right, so I am going to read through the um, addendum A in its entirety. <clears throat> so time, place, and manner restrictions and procedures for public school board meetings and public comments. Welcome. The school board welcomes input from community members, including letters, emails, and phone calls. For those who prefer to address the school board directly, the school board typically sets aside up to 30 minutes for public comment at regular school board meetings, but not at study sessions or special meetings. Time for public comment at regular school board meetings is not a requirement of the law. It is something the school board chooses to provide. The school board would like to provide the community with some general information about public comment sessions including the purpose of a public comment session, the procedures that apply, and prohibited conduct. Purpose. The purpose of a public comment period is to give community members an opportunity to provide input directly to the school board about issues that fall within the school board's authority. To fulfill this purpose, comments must be directed to the school board. Public comment is not a time for citizens to speak to the community or to the audience. For this reason, public comment sessions will not be recorded or live streamed. Written request to speak. Individuals who want to speak during a public comment session must submit a written request to speak before 3 p.m. on the day of the school board meeting. Requests must be submitted by email to the following email address. Public comment at isd624.org or by phone at 651-407 7563. The written or the, the request must state the individual's name, the individual's home address, whether the individual is a guardian of a student uh, or students or is a student in the district, whether the individual is employed by the district, and the agenda item, if any, that the individual wishes to discuss during the public comment period. Speakers must reside in the district, be a guardian of a student in the district, 
be a student in the district or be employed by the district. In the event that more than 10 individuals submit a written request to speak during the public comment uh, se uh, session, the school board will give priority to individuals who wish to address a specific item that is on the agenda for that, e uh, that meeting. After this priority has been applied, any remaining openings to speak up to the total of 10 individuals will be determined by lot. Speakers must be recognized. The school board chair will call speakers to the microphone and will recognize one speaker at a time. Speakers must be in person to be recognized. Only those individuals who have been recognized by the school board chair will be allowed to speak during the public comment period. The school board chair will rule out of order individuals who have not been recognized. Time limits. The public comment period will be held open for up to 30 minutes in total. This time limit is necessary in order to ensure that the school board is able to conduct its business during the meeting in an orderly, efficient, and timely fashion. Each speaker is permitted to speak for up to three minutes in total. One speaker may not give time to another speaker. Any person who does not get a chance to speak is encouraged to submit written comments to the school board. Email addresses for school board members are listed on the district's website. Cumulative presentations. Speakers are encouraged to avoid repeating comments that other speakers have made. Redundant presentations are not helpful and can deprive other individuals of the opportunity to speak during the public comment session. The school board will allow up to 10 minutes per topic. Prohibited conduct. The following conduct is prohibited during a public school board meeting, including during the public comment period. Speakers may not discuss or disclose any private educational data on any current or former student as defined in Minnesota statute section 13.32. As a result, speakers may not identify any current or former student during the uh, public comment. The only exception is uh, that a parent who is speaking may choose to discuss private educational data on his or her own child. Speakers may not make allegations, charges, or complaints against any student or employee. If a person wishes to make an allegation or to file a charge or complaint against a student or employee, the person should make the allegation, charge, or complaint to the superintendent in writing or in a private meeting or to the individual designated in district policy to receive the allegation, charge, or complaint. Speakers may not make comments or gestures that are threatening, profane, lewd, vulgar, obscene, harassing, or abusive. Speakers may not make comments that would violate federal or state law. <clears throat> including laws protecting the privacy rights of an individual. Speakers may not make comments related to pending contract negotiations or to pending litigation to which the district is a party, including grievance proceedings. Speakers may not campaign for or against a political candidate during any part of a public school board meeting. Speakers may not promote or advertise products that are for sale or purchase unless the board has in invited the speaker to present on the product as an agenda item. Members of the public may not engage in conduct <clears throat> that materially and substantially disrupts any part of a school board meeting or that otherwise impedes the school board's ability to conduct its business in an orderly and efficient fashion. The following are examples of conduct that is materially and substantially disruptive or that otherwise impedes the school board's ability to conduct its business in an orderly and efficient fashion. Making comments <coughs> that incite violence, making comments that reasonably instill fear, interrupting a speaker who has been recognized by the school board chair, making comments from the audience when the person making comments has not been recognized by the school chair, uh, school board chair, interrupting the school board chair or any other school board member or school official who is speaking, holding up a sign or displaying a banner regardless of the content of the sign or banner, clapping, cheering, booing, vocalizing approval or vocalizing disapproval for a speaker during the speaker's presentation unless a school board member or school official is presenting an award to a person or is describing an honor or award that a person received addressing the audience rather than the school board, 
bringing a weapon into the meeting room or onto school property, except as allowed under Minnesota law, violating room capacity requirements, and violating any law or district policy. Violations. <clears throat> if a speaker violates any of the established procedures or engages in any prohibited conduct, the board chair will rule the speaker out of order. If the speaker is presenting to the school board, the board cha chair may require the speaker to immediately end his or her presentation. If the speaker persists in violating any procedure or rule, the speaker will be directed to leave the premises and not return. A no trespass order may be issued and a referral may be made to law enforcement. If repeated disruptions occur during the public comment period, the school board chair may call a recess and, uh, and order that the room be cleared until the meeting resumes. If repeated disruptions occur, any school board member may make a motion to immediately end the public comment period. If the motion passes, citizens may use alternative avenues of communication to share their views with the school board, including written communications. If repeated disruptions occur during multiple meetings, the school board may vote to suspend public comment at meetings and to require that all public comments be in writing. Disorderly conduct. The, the district will refer potential incidents of disorderly conduct to law enforcement. Minnesota statute section 609.72 states, Whoever does any of the following in a public or private place, knowing or having reasonable grounds to know that it will or will tend to alarm, anger, or disturb others, or provoke an assault or breach of the peace, is guilty of disorderly conduct, which is a misdemeanor. One, engages in brawling or fighting, or disturbs an assembly or meeting, not unlawful in its character, or engages in offensive, obscene, abusive, boisterous, or noisy conduct, or uh, in offensive, obscene, or abusive language tending reasonably to arouse alarm, anger, or resentment in others. Superintendent response after public comments. Following public comments, the school board chair may ask the superintendent or a designee to respond or provide clarifying information to the school board. As a general matter, the school board will not act on any comments that were made during a meeting and do not uh, uh, relate directly to an agenda item for the meeting. And use of school property. All property of the district, including district parking lots and other grounds, are considered to be school property. Individuals or groups may not use school property for any purpose that has not been authorized by the district. Any use of school property must comply with district policy 902 and all administrative procedures related to that policy. The recommendation is to approve the addition of school board policy 206 addendum A. The change is made to addendum B for immediate implementation. Could I hear a motion? So moved. Motion by Dr. Arcand, a second. Second. Second by Ms. Beloyd. Any discussion? Seeing no discussion. Sorry, oh. uh, point of oh. clarification. In the one section you added a phone number, but it's not actually in the. Yep, we'll make, it, we'll make the revision in the final version. So the clarification is that we are adding the school district phone number as another way to submit your request to have a comment at the school board meeting and that phone number will be included in the final draft. Any other discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Yeah, that's a good one. Motion passes. We will now move into the public forum portion of our meeting. To ensure that we meet our time requirements, I'm going to have two timekeepers here up at the dais. Dr. Arcand will be keeping time for the whole public forum. So therefore, when we hit 30 minutes, time is up, and he will let us know when that is. Ms. Beloyd here will be keeping time for each individual speaker. Each individual speaker has a maximum of three minutes. Once you have one minute left, Ms. Beloyd will raise the orange card. When you have 30 seconds left, Ms. Beloyd will raise the yellow card, and when it is time to stop, the red card. I have nine cards here to speak. Please forgive me if I mispronounce your names. I will do the best that I can. Moving on 
on to our agenda item C1, Superintendent's Report. Dr. Kazmacek. Hi, thank you, Ms. Thank you, Ms. Allison. Yeah, I think your mic's off. Thank you, Ms. Allison, members of the board. Uh, thank you to the students, families, and community members who stopped by the districts both on 3rd Street during the weeks of Market Fest to pick up a pencil and a bear paw tattoo. We had a terrific time reconnecting with all of you during the fun summertime tradition. Construction crews recently completed the Transportation Department's new home, a 12,900 square foot facility. Uh, will house transportation staff and the district's fleet. Vehicles will be maintained and managed at the new facility as well. Uh, the project, which allows for expansion of the unified high school campus into the old transportation site, was made possible by the community's support of the 2019 bond referendum. The district website includes reminders of new school start times, general information for the school year, online family update info, a link to the application uh, educa uh, for educational benefits, and school supply lists. Find the page directly at isd624.org slash back to school. This page of the website will contain the most current and accurate information as you move toward the start of the school year. This Wednesday and next, free summer meal pickup for all children 18 and under is available at locations throughout the district. Complete information is available at a, uh, as a news item on the district website. I want to reiterate that this program is open to all children and that you are not taking meals away from someone who needs it more. We have enough food for all uh, who participate. Thanks to the U.S. Department of Agriculture, Nutrition Services is able to extend free meals to all students through the 21-22 school year. No application is required to receive this meal benefit. However, families may qualify for additional benefits if they complete an application for educational benefits online or in paper form. Applications can be found on the district website and information will be mailed to families before the school year begins. We are currently accepting enrollment for the 21-22 school year. Families can choose from two options, traditional in-person school and the district's distance learning academy. Find additional information at isd624.org slash enroll. And the district is hiring for a variety of positions, offering both school day and out of school time hours. Full and part-time options are available. Check out the employment page of our district website and find ways you can join us as a bear. Additional information can be found at the district website, www.isd624.org. And that's it. Thank you, Dr. Kazmacek. Any questions for Dr. Kazmacek? All right, we will move on to our first operational item. Operational item. We have a. Oh, I'm, I, I, my apologies. Yep. Uh, agenda item D1, it's a 2122 academic programming update, Dr. Gillespie. Good evening, Clerk Ellison, members of the board, Dr. Kazmierczak. Um I have a team here with me tonight. We wanna to update you on some of the planning that's occurred over spring and during the summer around um, our preparation as we start the upcoming school year. Um, I, if you can advance the slide, please. Thank you. Um, as we think about, and I, I started presentations, thank you very much, as we started presentations at the end of the school year, continuing to think about what have we learned from the past 18 months that um, were either opportunities that we, we know we don't want to repeat or areas that were highlighted as, as um, things that we need to highlight so that our students can achieve our student outcomes. And so the, the main goal is, as we think about each one of our students graduating college and career ready, what does that look like so that we, we increase the student achievement for each one of our students while simultaneously closing gaps that exist in our system and our data, whether that's predictable by race, um, English proficiency, students who may qualify for free and reduced lunch, students who are um, receive special education services. And so I've worked with um, an amazing team of leaders and teachers over the past year in this position um, in one of the greatest challenges we've all encountered, I think. Um, and so as we think about this upcoming school year, we're going to highlight over the next few board meetings and work study sessions work that we're excited about um, that either has given us an opportunity to reaffirm our commitment to things in our system and or build upon things 
things that we um, implemented over the past 18 months. And so, and again, I talked about this. We, we haven't talked a ton around data, whether that's externally with our community or internally. And so you'll see that theme come up in all of the presentations that I bring to you as the board or bring to the work study session or that we do internally as leaders with our educators to ensure that we are helping each one of our students graduate college and career ready when they, when they leave our system. How do we do that? And so we've worked really hard around collaborating across our whole system so that we look at individually in each one of our buildings what's the experience for our students with their educators and leaders, but also what is that vertical experience knowing that our students end up in one high school as we look towards especially a unified campus in a few years. We know that we need to continue to communicate amongst our buildings and district and how, do our, how does our districts um, our district teaching and learning departments support those buildings? How do we continue to cultivate, cultivate professional growth? How do we align our efforts to make sure that, again, all of, all of our arrows are pointing in the right direction to impact student um, achievement and their ability to reach those goals of college and career readiness? And then how do we make sure that we're co-creating our work in partnership with families and students? And so tonight I have, um, things that we would like to highlight from each one of our levels and leaders who are here to um, talk through each one of those areas. So I think the way it will go best, and I talked with Clerk Ellison, is we'll have each level introduce themselves, talk about their work, and then we'll pause for questions um, to make sure that we can have a presentation that is succinct but answers anything that you have. So without further ado, I will introduce my first colleague that's here, which is Cynthia Mueller, and to talk about our literacy work for elementary. Welcome, Ms. Mueller. Good evening. Thank you for having me. Um, so I'm excited. I'm in my uh, my role is I'm the principal at Otter Lake Elementary School, um, but I also happen to have a deep passion um, and lots of training in the world of literacy. Um, so I found a way to capitalize on that as well in supporting our team. Um, and this was work that I had presented on prior to the last couple school years, um, and now we're really reinvigorated and picking it back up. Um, and so there's really um, four key bucket areas that we continue to work on with elementary li literacy and coming back to. Um, so really thinking about curriculum, assessment, instruction, and then also the professional learning. So with curriculum, looking at what's guaranteed and viable for all of our students, ensuring this for all of our students. Um, and we're reviewing our English language arts program. Um, the state of Minnesota has pushed back the adoption the, or the um, implementation of the new state standards, which has also given us some extra much needed time and very much appreciated. So we have a team of instructional coaches that will be facilitating that. I will help them in those efforts of facilitating that um, within a team of teachers teachers, and of course, including families. Um, instruction, we have a literacy instructional leadership team, um, and really this is around designing um, together our instructional leadership with principals, instructional coaches, our teaching and learning team, and student support services. So it really is aligned and building our capacity for this level of leadership related to literacy. Um, and so we meet frequently, continue to meet frequently, um, adopting our vision for literacy but then also gaining some knowledge in what are those high impact instructional practices and how do we support teachers in engaging those in those in their classroom. Our assessment system, um, reviewing that and aligning it, so just like Dr. Gillespie had talked about, so that we have that uh, information readily available to know how are our students achieving, where are those gaps, and how do we quickly adjust to meet their needs, um, and then making sure it is aligned across our K-5 um, system, but also aligned with the science of reading research. And then the professional development. Um, so we will continue to have site-based professional development that we will be co-designing with our instructional leadership team and supporting teachers and really focusing in on the science of reading. Would you like me to introduce who's next? Oh, thank you, Ms. Mueller. Uh, any questions? Uh, Ms. Boyd. Yes. Um, I just want to know, could you give just a couple examples of the assessments that the teachers do at the elementary yeah. level? So um, we have screening assessments, so there's a variety of assessments, but under the screening assessment bucket, which is what all students would receive um, assessment in, is we use the FAST, FASTbridge. Um, so there's early reading, early math skills, um, and then other um, fluency comprehension assessments related to that. So FAST is our big screening assessment. Um, and then we also, so, um, 
have just ongoing data uh, formative assessments within the classrooms that are co-created by teams of teachers um, for monitoring that. Of course, we look at MCA, the Minnesota Comprehensive Assessment, as one, one piece. I think it's important with any time with data you're using multiple measures and triangulating that data. Okay, thank you. Yep. Any other questions for Ms. Mueller? Thank you, Ms. Mueller. Thank you. Our next teammate is Amber Walsh, our principal of the new Distance Learning Academy. I'm like, where'd you go, Amber? <laughs> Welcome, Ms. Walsh. Members, um, I'm Amber Walsh, principal of the Distance Learning Program. Uh, this year, we will be a K-8 program. Um, last year we ran K-5, and so we've added grades 6, 7, and 8. Uh, we do continue to add students. I, I had talked to enrollment today, and they've gotten numerous phone calls just today. Um, so we have about 129 students when I left my desk today, but that number is continuously growing. I've got a full-time staff of five uh, general education teachers and one special education teacher, uh, support staff, school psych, uh, social worker, English language teacher, and then a reading intervention teacher. Most of the support staff is a partial staff member, not a full time, so I'm sharing them with other buildings or locations in the district. And then with our 6-8 program, in order to personalize it and be able to meet the needs of all of the students with a variety of math and literacy levels, um, and then multiple social studies and science courses, we are using Pearson's online curriculum, which just gives us a lot of flexibility. In doing that, we've adapted a model where we do have a math teacher that will run all of our math courses, uh, White Bear Lake continuing teacher, and then we are running all of our guidance and our, our advisory every day for our students through White Bear Lake area teachers um, that will meet with our six, eight students on a regular basis. Thank you, Ms. Walsh. Any questions for Ms. Walsh? All right, thank you. All right, our middle school principals, Christina Pierre will start, and then Katherine Peterson. Good evening, everyone. Christina Pierre, principal at Sunrise. I'll see if Good I can advance Pierre. the slide. Yes. All right, so what we're excited about in middle school is continuing to increase the rigor. So we started our new middle school programming last year, and I kind of would characterize that as a soft start. So this year we're really excited to go all in and implement fully. Um, just reminding you, in sixth and seventh grade, we're adding that, that literacy course. So students actually have a class and a half of the language arts literacy experience. And then uh, Minnesota history is now full year for all sixth graders. We have a half a year of health in seventh grade. And then in eighth grade, eighth graders have that opportunity to take a full year of world language and earn a high school credit. So along with increasing the academic rigor, we also are increasing our supports. And Katherine Peterson will talk about that. Good evening. Um, at the middle school, we are excited to uh, bring the bar program to the middle school, which um, has, uh, we learned a lot about during the year um, from its implementation at North Campus. And bar stands for uh, building assets and reducing risks. What I'm really excited about is, is an opportunity for us to be able to team students again so that we have an opportunity for teachers um, to be able to collaborate, really understand uh, the whole child, um, and think about how we really support students. In addition, it's all about leveraging students' um, assets and building on their strengths. So it's going to provide us an opportunity to support them uh, academically, um, socially, and emotionally, as well as help us to align with uh, supports for grades 6 through 10. Great. Thank you. Any questions for Dr. Pierre or Ms. Peterson? All right. Oh, um, pardon me. Dr. Newmaster. I'm sorry. I probably saw something like this in an early chart, but... How, how are, other than world language, how are some of the other electives worked in, like music and choir, band, orchestra? Sure. Okay. Back. Oh, okay. Yeah, if we can back up a couple slides. 
Yeah, so in sixth grade, so all sixth graders have design and modeling for a quarter and art for a quarter. They also have FIAD and music, which alternate every other day all year. Same in seventh and eighth grade, FIAD and a fine arts choice, which includes art in seventh and eighth grade as well. They alternate every other day all year. And then, yeah, I already spoke about the world language option in eighth grade students also have several other options they can choose from in eighth grade if they don't want to take that full year of world language. Dr. Newmaster? My only question, what I had trouble understanding was they flip music, but since music is a continuous study, music is a fine arts option then in, okay, it wasn't specified and I didn't know. it's. Yep. So what all is included in those choices? So band, orchestra, choir, and art. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. <clears throat> Lastly, we have Matt Young here, from, uh, who's an associate principal at White Bear Lake Area High School South Campus, who's gonna talk about our multi-tiered systems of support for our 912 campus. Mr. Young, hello. Yeah. Good evening. Thanks for having me. So uh, what we really want to talk about tonight is um, something that we're working in collaboration with North Campus, and that is our uh, MTSS uh, initiative. MTSS is a multi-tiered system of support. Um, what we really want to do is build on the successes of BAR through 1012. So some of the things that are a little unique to 1012 as opposed to grade nine and six through eight, um, where you were having that bar program is 10 and through 12, we've, the, the number of electives and things like that make it more challenging to do the traditional teaming. Thank you. So when we implement this MTSS program, we really wanna gain a deeper understanding um, of our students by um, doing more targeted supports by um, trying to meet their needs to a greater level. We're gonna use a lot of different data points um, throughout the year to, um, to help us gain that deeper understanding of our students. This MTSS program also provides us with additional structures in place for those uh, supports. So we can do a better job of um, monitoring progress. If a student needs additional supports, we can more effectively and proactively um, supply those supports. If a student's doing well, and maybe some of those supports need to be, or can be you know, removed, we can do that as well. We also really wanna make sure we're aligning supports between both campuses. As we move forward to 2024, um, it's really important that as we merge, everything is, everything is cohesive. So we wanna start that now instead of waiting to 2024. So with that in mind, we, um, North and South Campus are really going to mirror um, and collaborate at a high level to ensure that all of our um, collaborative teams at each building are as much as identical as possible. For example, each building is going to have a leadership, MTSS leadership team. They will have um, mirrored team members at each building. And um, we also will meet continuously monthly as a larger unit between the buildings. At each building, we also have our building leadership team, same title as previous years, however, is gonna look a little bit different because they're focusing in more on the operational side of things um, and not trying to do as many things broadly so they kind of can focus that in. We also have our learning leadership team um, and that again is gonna focus on um, instruction tier one support or our instructional support across all students for all grade levels, making sure there is cohesion there. Um, we also have our risk review teams at each building. In ninth grade, that's going, that is the bar team meetings, risk review, and now we're uh, moving that on to 10 through 12. Um, we already had a SAT team or the student assistance team that is simply a restructure of that team for, for uh, 10, 12. And of course, we still have our equity and achievement teams and our CITs, all again providing additional support structures for our students. Questions? Ms. Boyd? How often does the risk review happen for the team? Great question. Risk review happens weekly. So how would, say you have a student that's 
struggling, how would that student then be flagged? Would it be identified during the risk review meeting? Would a teacher come in to the meeting? How, how would that work? Great question. So um, what we're doing is there's different, th different teams are going to look at different different elements of our, of our support structure. So risk review is really looking at um, an increased level of support as per, you know, your general, um, general population of students. The teachers themselves will work with the student to do our, what we call tier one instruction, tier one support. They will also then, as a smaller team, perhaps in their CIT teams, look at doing um, level two or tier two type of support instruction, which is a little bit more targeted um, than your, uh, your universal instruction. If they're not having success at tier one, or excuse me, at the CIT level, you know, if they've implemented those tier two um, supports and they're still not working well, they will then refer that to the risk review team, and the risk review team will, um, review all the data, perhaps the data that the teacher has shared, the instructional data that we have on that student as well, the social emotional data that we have on that student, and then make determinations to do tier three supports. Can you give me an example of a tier two? Sure. Um, a tier two support, um, wide variety of things could happen. Perhaps um, that student um, from a social emotional standpoint um, is working with a counselor on, you know, maybe they meet with their counselor once a week. Um, for, for an academic support, um, perhaps that student is working with our, um, one of our academic achievement interventionists. Another tier two support that could easily be done in like a classroom is if, if I'm having a difficult time connecting with a student, maybe I'm having more negative interactions than positive interactions, I as that teacher could um, really work towards and maybe track Am I trying to have three positive interactions before I have one negative interaction with that student? So it really is going to vary, and it's going to be really targeted to that student. And some will need, you know, full, just purely in-class support, whereas maybe there's another adult in the building that's going to provide some support. Okay, thank you. Yep. Any other questions? Oh, Dr. Arcand. I, I just have a quick question. Is um, we're really good at acronyms in, in education. So just in case somebody doesn't know, what's a CIT? Yeah, CIT is um, curriculum instruction teams, small groups. All the um, the t people in that team generally are the same content. So, um, world history teachers, chemistry teachers, things like that. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Unless there's any final questions for me, that wraps up our presentation. Any final questions for Dr. Gillespie? All right. All right. Thank, Thank you, you, Dr. Gillespie. We will move on to our next agenda item. Our first operational item, E1. I believe this is Mr. Wald. Yes, it is. <clears throat> Thank you, Ms. Allison, members of the board, Dr. Kazmercheck. Our first item is uh, action on authorizing the review of proposals and selection of purchaser for the issuance of the General Obligation Alternative Facilities Refunding Bonds, Series 2021B. Now this is a process the board has had some familiarity with because the market conditions have created an opportunity for us to do some refunding of uh, several bonds over the last few years. Um, our team at Ellers regularly watches our any bond, current bonds that we have and looks uh, if the bonds are callable, are, are market conditions as such that this would be a good time to refund and by doing so could save the district some funds. And so at this point we do have um, some 2012, 2012 Series B bonds. That was an $8.85 million in alternative facilities uh, bonds that we can now refund um, and hopefully get a savings in the neighborhood of $150,000 or greater. So our recommendation um, at this point is for the board to approve the resolution stating the intention of the board to issue general obligation alternative facilities refunding bonds series 2021B and taking other actions with respect thereto, uh, which we mean the superintendent or designee and work with our representatives at Ellers to make the decision on um, approving the bonds on sale date and then bringing it back to the board would be uh, likely October or November for approval. Thank you, Mr. Waltz. You've heard the recommendation. Could I get a motion to approve the recommendation? So moved. 
A uh, motion by Dr. Newmaster. Could I get a second? Second. Second from Dr. Arcand. Any discussion? This will require a roll call vote. I would ask the clerk to please call the roll. Lloyd? Aye. Ellison? Aye. Newmaster? Aye. Thompson? Aye. Arcand? Aye. And the motion passes. Okay, and we have that resolution in the board packet, so we'll need the clerk's signature at the end of the meeting. Excellent, thank you. And we'll move on to agenda item E2. This is also Mr. Wald. Yes, and that is action on an agreement for district-wide municipal solid waste and recycling services. So our current agreement is uh, with Republic Services, and that has expired. And so we're now at a point where we needed to go out and issue an RFP for um, disposal services. And we did have three bids on those services. Uh, it's an interesting industry. There's been a lot of acquisition across that industry, and so there are fewer haulers than there have been in previous RFPs. But we did have three bids from very reputable companies. That's Republic Services, Waste Manager, and Walters Recycling and Refuse. And so uh, we had a scoring process, and the scoring uh, table was in the packet tonight, so you can see that there's uh, competitive, and Republic uh, once was the winner on that bidding process significantly. So we're recommending that the board approve uh, the agreement, three-year agreement with Republic Services for district-wide solid waste and recycling services, effective September 2nd, 2021. It is a three-year agreement with an opportunity to extend it additionally, uh, three additional years. Thank you. You've heard the recommendation. Could I get a motion to approve? So moved. Motion by Ms. Boyd, a second? Yeah. Second by Ms. Thompson. Any discussion? Uh, one thing, you said September 2nd. Is it September 1st? Uh, yes, okay. thank you. Yep. I don't know why I would skip September 1st. <laughs> 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 we'll probably have a lot of trash on September 1st. <laughs> So, without any discussion, this will require a roll call vote. Lloyd? Aye. Ellison? Aye. Newmaster? Aye. Thompson? Aye. Arcand? Aye. And the motion passes. And on to our, our final operational item, also Mr. Wald? Yes, and this uh, E3 is action on Ramsey County School Waste Reduction and Recycling Grant. And first, a shout out to Dan Rozier, our uh, Director of Building Operations, who is um, like the rest of our operations team has been very aggressive in seeking out and securing grants to support their work. The uh, school waste reduction and recycling grant is with Ramsey County and it is, this is going to be $190,000 over the next three years and it's going to help us provide uh, recycling opportunities at all of our new facilities, new construction and new facilities. So we're excited about the grant. Uh, and we think it's going to do good things for our ability to continue to be a leader in school recycling. So the recommendation uh, is to accept the Ramsey County School Waste Reduction and Recycling Grant to improve recycling of materials and food waste. You've heard the recommended action. Could I get a motion to approve? So moved. Motion by Dr. Newmaster and a second? Second. Second by Dr. Arcand. Any discussion? Ms. Boyd. I just had a quick question. The, the Food to Hogs program, so that's at all of the schools now? Because I know at one point in time it wasn't at all of the schools. Uh, yeah, I believe it is at all of our schools. And, and Dan could answer that more um, confidently than I, but he's not able to make it tonight. But it was on hold this year because you know, for obvious mm -hmm. reasons. But we expect that program to be robust. And one of the elements in this grant is that there'll be sheds outside to protect the food waste that we can set outside for the hog trucks to come pick it up and... Do we pay them to come pick it up? Uh, boy, that's a great question. Um, I believe that was my understanding. Yeah, I, there is a cost associated with it, and I don't have that with me, um, but I can get that information to you. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? And I would just add that we would we we pay significantly less to recycle it with hogs than we would to haul it. So our, our hauling is based on weight. Food waste is extremely heavy. And so we save money. There's a cost to doing it, but it's, uh, it definitely reduces our hauling expenses. Yes. 
Okay. So this will require, unless there's any other discussion, this will require a roll call vote. Lloyd? Aye. Ellison? Aye. Newmaster? Aye. Thompson? Aye. Arcan? Aye. And the motion passes. Thank you, Mr. Wald. Thank you. And we move on to the final element of our board meeting, the board forum. This is an opportunity for the board to share any news happening in the district. Does anyone want to share something for board forum? Right? Oh, oh, oh Ms. Thompson. Um, I don't have anything to share per se about happenings in the district, but I do want to address um, what happened during public forum a little bit, I guess maybe, because I feel what is going on in our community is very contentious right now. Um, I personally myself am not a fan of what is happening in our district because I think it takes away from our district's work uh, to make this a district that our kids can all achieve within. And for me, that was the reason why I ran for school board. Um, I understand that the adults in the room were not able to uh, behave as our students do when they're in the building and control themselves, which caused the meeting to end uh, in a way that I feel um, saddened by because there was a student who came in here and spoke in front of all of the adults in the room. That takes courage uh, that I can't imagine what she went through to find the courage to come here and say what she wanted to say to us. To then have it end so abruptly because adults, again, could not control themselves whether or not the applause was deserved for her bravery, that is not the way that public forum uh, happens. It's just the way it is. There are rules that we all have to follow. Our students follow them. We ask them to follow them and they follow them. And uh, I would suggest that the adults in our community look to their children as a guidance of how to behave when you are in a school building. I believe that she was very brave and um, I applaud her myself for coming here and speaking in front of us. I am sorry that it had to end the way it did um, and I would hope that it would never stop another student from coming in and addressing us as a school board. Again, public forum is to address us, the school board, not the community. If you want to be addressed by the community, obviously there is an election, everybody knows it, Put your name in the ballot. If you win, you'll be sitting up here with us, hopefully doing the good work that we are all here to do, which is to build a district that we can all be proud of and all of our students feel safe in. Thank you, Ms. Thompson. Any other comments for Board Forum? Dr. Arcand. Um, I had the opportunity yesterday to spend time with my five-year-old granddaughter. And as we were school shopping and picking up backpacks and picking up pencils and boxes and crayons, it reminds me of why we're here. It's the wonder and the excitement that she is displaying that she gets to start this opportunity of learning. And that's why we're all here. And so we, I want us to all remember that, that these kids are coming in and they're looking to explore and learn. And they're, a lot of them are excited. I, and I think all the way from K to 12th and even those going off to college. So that's what's exciting. That's why we're here and that's why I love education because we have that opportunity to, to explore and ask questions and learn. So let's remember that as we're going in. It's gonna be a great year. We're gonna be positive. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Arkand. Dr. Newmaster. On a positive note, I just had the pleasure of three evenings at Market Fest and lots of conversations with people looking at the kids with the activities in ECFE and the excitement and the kids talking about their, their pencil and going to school and what they'd already started and how we're in August. So I think we all have divisions, but the important part is the kids going back and a positive start for everybody from the time they have breakfast at home till they get on the bus and till the end of their school day and get home again. So I hope we can all be there for them. And I really enjoyed every person I talked to at Market Fest. There's a lot of anticipation. However it starts, it's starting and people are ready. So, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Newmaster. 
Any other comments? Ms. Bloyd. I just want to say that I had the opportunity um, last week to, well, the last couple times to attend the community conversations, uh, Faces of White Bear. Um, I thought it was engaging. I thought it was a really good process. So I would encourage everyone who, if you've seen the emails um, and you want to know what it's about, I encourage everyone to come. Thank you. All right. And with that, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. I move for an adjournment, please. Uh, motion by Dr. Arcand, second? Second. Second by Ms. Boyd. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. And we are adjourned. Thank you.